So up to now, we only know that finite dimensional operators or um, operators with finite uh, finite dimensional range are compact. And uh, well, that would not be very interesting, but uh, rather uh, most of all, most of the uh, integral operators we'll be looking at are actually compact. And uh, to prove that we need a small, but very useful lemma. And uh, I've already, written this down. Um, assume that uh, Kn is a sequence of compact operators as you linear, as uh, everything as usual, uh, that goes from a Banach space X to a Banach space Y. And assume that, and this is the crucial thing here, assume that Kn converges to K with respect to the operator norm in uh, X and Y. Um, okay, so uh, let us prove that. Uh, and and uh, if that, excuse me, <laughs> let's assume that uh, Kn converges to K with respect to the operator norm, and then K is compact. Okay, let's prove that. Um, and let me first tell you why, why might that be important? Well, uh, that means if you can approximate an operator uh, by a sequence of compact operators, then uh, the limiting operator is always also compact. And that is something that you will use in the exercises. Okay, um, so let's do that, okay. So uh, what we need to show is um, that um, a limited sequence has a convergent subsequence. Well, if Xn is a limited sequence in X, then Kxn has a convergent subsequence. Okay, um, so let's do it the following way. Let's take Xn, a sequence in X, and let's assume that it's bounded. And without loss of generality, I assume that it's bounded by one. Okay, uh, K1 is compact. Which means that Xn has a subsequence, which I call Xn. 1j overall j uh, such that k x and 1j is convergent okay since uh, x n 1 j is uh, a subsequence of x n, it's all also bounded by one, and so since k two is compact, that means that x n one has a subsequence x n two j. Which, oh, it's, that was K1, excuse me. Such that now K2, Xn2j is convergent. And I can make that arbitrarily smaller. So, I'm, so that sequence gets thinner and thinner. Um, so you have uh, a lot of sequences which converge, and uh, that's um, that's an idea you know very well from uh, the introductory introductory courses on analysis. So in this case, what you do is you take the diagonal series, the diagonal sequence, and that's now exactly what we'll do. We'll take y j as the diagonal sequence x n j. J. So that's the jth um, element of the sequence X and J. Okay, um, so something we should keep in mind. Um, 
let n be arbitrary, then then starting at some point, yj is a subsequence of xnj. of x and n, excuse me, of x n and j, right? Because, uh, well, starting at the point n, uh, that must be a subsequence. So uh, the, while the first elements may be different, starting at point n, everything is a subsequence of that sequence and that sequence uh, now that uh, the um, kn yj, that means that kn yj is convergent because starting at that uh, at some point it's a subsequence of this one and this is convergent. So for this one kn um, uh, a kn applied to that one is convergent. So kn yj is convergent. And in particular, it's a Cauchy series. Uh, now we'll make use of uh, this, uh, of what I proposed, k minus k, uh, k converges to kn. So that means that uh, I can make k minus kn arbitrarily small. In particular, oops, there is an n such that the norm of k minus kn is smaller or equal to epsilon over 3. OK, um, now since kn yj is convergent, as I said, it is also a Cauchy sequence. And uh, we have that since it's a, a kn yj, for this n is Cauchy sequence. Which means that I can make kn yj minus kn yi. Arbitrarily small provided that um, that um, j and i are large enough. So there is an i naught such that this is smaller again than epsilon over 3 for i and j large enough for i and j larger than i naught. Okay, and uh, now we, I think we just have to plug this in. So I want to show that uh, k n y uh, k times y j is a Cauchy sequence. Did I say that? Well, of course, to be uh, to be um, k, yeah, um, I would say that k. Oops, I want to show that k y. J is a Cauchy sequence. And since that is a subsequence, since yj is a subsequence of our original sequence x, um, this is all we need. If it's a Cauchy sequence, it converges since we're in a Banach space. OK, so uh, let's prove that. And uh, I take the norm of k times y, uh, k times y, uh, i minus k times yj, and that needs to be small for i and j large enough. Now um, I can write this as the norm of, well, I add a kn and uh, subtract it again, so let, let me sh show you how that is done. Kyi minus k 
kn yi plus kn yi minus kn yj plus kn yj minus kyj. This is the normal way of doing this. And so this is small or equal to uh, the norm of k minus kn times yi plus the norm of knyi minus knyj plus the norm of kn minus k times yj. Okay, now uh, this is small or equal to the norm of k minus l, and these should all be capital N's, I'm sorry. Okay, now this is smaller than the norm of k minus kn times the norm of yi, but uh, yi is a sequence of the xj, and uh, the xj were bounded by 1, so this is smaller than k minus kn, and so this is more or equal to epsilon over 3. Now, um, if i and j are large enough, so if i and j are larger than i0, then, oh, well, that's uh, just what I had up there. And this is smaller or equal to, <laughs> epsilon over 3 again, oh, and of course this one is more or equal to epsilon over 3 again. So if i and j are larger than i0, then this is smaller or equal to epsilon. So that means that chi yi is a Cauchy sequence Always called it yj. It's a Cauchy sequence, and that means it converges. Since we're in a Banach space, and uh, that means that k is compact because x had a convergent subseries. Okay, so uh, in the next short, again short chapter, I will use this to prove compactness of L2 operators.